Yo, what is up guys? So this is the software design and development pass paper 2018. And we're gonna look at algorithms, which is probably one of the toughest parts about this exam and this course. So basically in this question, a table is a two dimensional array with four rows and four columns. In the example below, table two one equals two. So if we look at this, so they've given us an example here. And basically um, when we say two one, it means uh, the second row and the first column. So that happens to be the two. So this is gonna be really important later on. It says the following algorithm describes a process that can be applied to the elements in this array, this 2D array. And we've got this uh, algorithm down here. And basically the first part of this question is show the contents of the table after the algorithm has been applied. So basically we need to take this algorithm and apply it to this, this, this array, this 2D array. Now in this course, in, all, in many past paper exams, um, the uh, Nessa loves to give you a 2D array. They just, there's frequently always a 2D array. So getting competent in 2D arrays is really critical if you wanna succeed. So let's jump right in. So at the top here, we've got the header, which is begin process. And we've got these two uh, variables and obviously they're integers. So number of rows equals four, number of columns equals four. Now this is just to help us understand what the four is. So if we look at the grid, it's a four by four grid. It's a four by four array. So obviously they've listed the two fours here. Um, now we've got a for loop, which means repetition. So they've declared this, uh, this variable called row equals to one, two number, of, two number of rows. So what this means is, is that we're gonna cycle through the numbers. Row is gonna cycle through the values one, two, three, and four, and then um, terminate on the value four. Then within this for loop, here's where things get a bit tricky. We've got a nested for loop for the for um, the columns, but this one's a little different. It says the column equals row plus one. So that's going to be a bit tricky. So it's going to go. It's going to col is going to start to whatever row was plus one two number of columns. So within this uh, nested loop, we've got a bunch of, um, we've got this new variable called temp. And the idea is whenever you see a temp variable, likely what's happening is you're swapping values in an array. So for example, if I had a couple of values, say one, two, three, and I wanted to swap the values one and the three, I can't just swap them because if I try to write the value three to the first item in the array, I'll actually lose the, the one, I'll lose the data. So if I wanna write the value here, I can't just write it because I've overridden written the first value. So what this means is, is that we actually need a, a temporary variable, temp, and in this case, we can store the original value one in it, overwrite the first part of the array, and then we can write whatever was stored in temp into the last part, which happened to be the value one. So keep that in mind. So what we need to do to solve this is we need to now do a desk check, which is basically a table which lists all the variables at the top. And we write how the variables change as we step through the algorithm down here. So let's do that. So I'm gonna write a little table here. So I'm gonna write, uh, so I'm gonna write CR, so which means column, row, and I'm gonna write T bracket row column, and then one more table column row. And basically what we're gonna do is fill in this, uh, this table with the values. So if we look to the initial values, we know row starts off as one, which is here, uh, column, if we look, column equals row, so row equals one plus one, so column will start as two. Then we're gonna say table row column, so that means table 
one, two. So that means the first row, the second value, which is eight. So that means row col is going to be the value eight. And then that means table column row. So that's table two, one is going to be the value two. Now, if we look back to this, we set the temp value to table row col. Then we set table row col to equal table col row. And then we set table col row to equals temp. And basically, as I mentioned before, what we're doing is we're swapping the values. So basically what this means is, is that this eight and this two are being swapped. So we're gonna write this down here. We're gonna write two and eight. Now this might change, but we're just gonna write it in. Now, so basically what we're gonna do is then we're gonna increment the column because we've hit the end of this inner for loop. So we're gonna go back to the top and now we're going to basically increment the column. So column is no longer gonna be two, it's gonna be three, but row is gonna stay the same because we haven't gone into the outer for loop just yet. Right, so now what's gonna happen is we're gonna repeat the same process. So table row column, um, so instead of, so it's gonna be one, three, so that means row one, uh, column three, which means one. <clears throat> and table column row is going to be T. Uh, um, three, one, which means row three, column one, which is this one. So basically that what that means, if we look back to our little swapping uh, lines of code here, is we're swapping the one into this empty space. So the one is gonna go here. And the empty, what was empty is gonna be overwritten with the one, so that it's just gonna be left blank. So this square down here is gonna be left blank. So this is gonna be left blank. Right, so once again, <clears throat> we increment column and we've hit the four. Now remember, um, the for loop is inclusive. So we're gonna run it again for the value four even though four is the terminating condition. So on the next, this will be the last pass of the for loop, right? So we do it again. So table uh, one, four, because as I said, column is four and row is one. So for table RC or table row column, it's gonna be table one, four. So that means row one, empty space this, is gonna swap with table uh, four one. So this one. Now, since they're both blank, nothing happens. So we just ignore that. Okay, now we go, since we've hit the terminating condition for the inner for loop, we have to go to the outer for loop now. So the outer for loop is, uh, so the outer, so now we have to increment the outer for loop. So the outer for loop, so instead of one, we're gonna have the value two for row. Now we have to do the inner for loop again. So col is gonna equal row plus one. So since row is, is two, plus one is gonna be three. So column is actually gonna become three because um, two plus one is three. Then we have to repeat the whole swapping part of it again. So basically table, two, three, if we look at our thing, that means the second row, the third value, which is four, is gonna swap with table three, two, which is um, the third row, second space. So that means here. So it's gonna swap with this one. So if we write it out, that means the four is gonna go here. So in this case, this was four and this was blank. Okay, then we, once again, we increment the column. So column f uh, table four, one, four is blank. And we're gonna swap it with table uh, four, one, which is also blank. So nothing happens. So we don't do any swapping. Then once again, we increment, then we finish the inner for loop. So we go to the outer for loop and we're gonna 
increment the row. So once we increment the row, um, the value is going to be three. Then we go to the inner for loop. So the first point of the column is row plus one. So that means column is going to be four. So um, then we look at this, what swapping is going to happen. So it's going to be table uh, four three. So four third, which is blank, swap with three, four. So one, two, three, one, two, which is this one, which is blank. Um, and then that ends, that inner four, that inner loop ends because we've hit the terminating condition of value four. And then we go to the outer loop, and then um, we increment row to four. But since we've already if we try to go to the inner for loop again, row plus one is going to be five. But since that's past the terminating terminating condition, we actually don't even execute the inner loop again. And then we go to the outer loop, row is incremented to five, and that just ends because we've hit the terminating condition and thus the end of the process. So obviously we didn't move some values, we didn't move the value five, and we didn't move the value six. And so this is the completed final answer. So I know that was kind of confusing, um, but basically as long as you do a desk check and you just go step by step, um, it should make it a lot easier for you. And you can always go back and sanity check your desk check to make sure that you've actually got the correct answer. So I'm gonna end this segment here. Um, I'll do another video tackling part B of this question, which requires us to actually write some code.